Okay, I'll get started here. Um, good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, thank you so much to International Clarinet Association, the ICA, for setting this up for everyone to join in and learn a little bit and share our times with Brahms, and especially to those that are going to be entering the Young Artists Competition, where the Brahms is one of the required pieces. Uh, if you have questions, drop them down in the chat and I will see them or someone else will see them and uh, let me know. Um, if you're going to be playing, uh, raise your hand or click something to let me know you're going to be playing so um, I don't spend too much time with just one person who's playing. And you can change your mind later, but I hope you will uh, join in uh, playing. Great. Uh, so there will be links uh, that will get you to the score and also a link that will get you to the clarinet part. Uh, the score, I will be sharing the screen that we that I will be using today and it has measure numbers on it so it's quicker to negotiate where we're going. Um, I'll be showing some videos of different players, different styles, different eras. Uh, there will be um, two different versions. I won't play all of it, just snippets. Um, my main teacher was Gervais de Pire. He recorded these pieces uh, at least twice, and I'll be showing some of that. There's Harold Wright's recording, uh, two of them, one studio and one a live recording. Uh, Reginald Kell's recording from the 1950s, uh, Carl Leister's recording, and little snippets from Richard Stoltzman, Sabina Meyer, David Schifrin, Martin Frost in a studio recording, and also a live recording uh, with uh, Yuja Wong, and also a bit of the viola version with Pincus Zuckerman, who is using the same pianist that De Pire used in one of the recordings. Uh, there will also be links to a uh, Music Minus One or backing track uh, that Jung Yoon has put up in his, I think, Color the Piano or whatever the title of his channel is, that's in there. And you might find that happen helpful. There are several other uh, backing tracks that people have put up. I like Jung's because I've worked with him, so I just have a little bit of a preference for him. Um, I am going to move on to the score. For those of you who have not played this piece or are new to it but have been playing it a bit, um, I'm going to start with uh, how you would approach it if you've never played it before up to having a young professional join me and some excerpts from it. Um, I would watch the score while you are listening to a recording uh, and different recordings to see how different performers are interpreting it, how they're playing it. And once you feel comfortable, um, go ahead and play along with it. I know some teachers don't think that's a good idea. I think it's very good not to start mimicking exactly what the performer does, uh, and also play along with different performers. You will get a sense of their pacing, their breathing, uh, their colorings, their shadings of notes, their intonation. And I think that's helpful. Don't do it too much. Then go back and find what it is for your particular interpretation. Um, Matt. Uh, we have Matthew Fontana here. Uh, just so you know, he's a former student of mine. So if I am, uh, I'm used to teaching him, he's used to my teaching. So just know that. that. So Matt, could you just start? Um, and also, are you looking off the part or the score? Um, I'm on the I'm on the part right now, but I could go okay. to the score if you like. It's up to you. Um, as long as your part has the measure numbers, so you can get around. Sure. And I prefer, especially now with iPads, and we can easily turn pages. I really enjoy playing this off the score now. Uh, before the iPad, and you could turn pages with the foot, it would have been a little bit harder. And I really like seeing 
both parts in front of me at the same time when I'm performing. So, Matt, go ahead. All right. I couldn't get the backing track thing to work, so I'm just going to... That's, that's fine. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to stop you there. Uh, do you hear that it's clipping in and out? I don't. Oh, okay. Uh, do other people hear that it's clipping in and out? Yes, other people are hearing it's clipping in and out. Um, Hold on, I just put the original sound on. Let me see if that helps. Okay, but before you do that, I can take... Um, I would... Re slowing it down a little bit. Sure. Um, it's almost sounding like a march. Beat up, ba da bump. So if you'd slow it down, think of the phrases this way, not this way, and smooth them out, just more lyrical, singing it. Um, I have with me here different editions. I don't really care what edition people use. Um, I have one here that is from 1951 uh, that Gervais de Pyer gave me and then started marking up immediately. It's got lots wow. of markings. And he crossed out the word, it's called Second Sonata. He crossed Sonata out and put the word song. And then all through these pages, he keep, kept writing in, sing, sing, sing. Um, and I have his edition from 1947. It's an English edition. And you may notice on here, uh, there are no markings. And this is the edition he used for the recording. His piano part to this has tons of markings in it. And the only markings he has in his part is the last movement. The rest, there is nothing there. And I have an edition from 1939, Carl Fisher. And so those are the ones I have. Um, so Matt, try again, and let's hear how it sounds. Stop right there. Um, that's much better as far as it not sounding like a march. But rhythmically, um, I, it's sort of all of, if it could be that you give equal weight to your eighth notes, especially those pick a da dee da da If you get a little bit more color and sound on the bottom, don't rush in da e da but a little bit more time on them. Mm. Um, also, when you, uh, and I'll just tell you now, if you can avoid circular breathing in this piece, sure, um, there is no need for it. Gotcha. Um, and I mean, there might be at the set, the sotto voce, mm -hmm. which has that long thing, uh, but I don't think you need it. I think it will detract from you trying to make it more vocal. And also we can hear it. Gotcha. And, um, and, not only hear the the snort, but there's a little bit of a dip in intonation. And in a piece like this, you really do not need circular breathing. Gotcha. Um, if you could make sure of your pitch at that first note, that you come in right on it, and that the sound leads the F, V, e, G, and that we don't hear what I call this sausage of it gets louder and the da da di ba da da so it, the sound moves forward and you don't have this bulge in the middle gotcha. and you right. try and these are things i'm telling matthew but these are things that you can take for your own playing as well so if you could start again sure i'll do that again okay Stop you 
there. Can you get a better connection over that bar line, the D to the B flat? Sure. Um, we don't want, although you will, I was going to say you don't want an accent on that B flat, although in some of the early recordings um, with Kel, and I just uh, heard Jack Brimer recording of it, they actually accented that note because you need a little bit more air for it. And I think they just, just gave it more air with their tongue. It also could have been a stylistic thing. I wasn't hearing the Brahms live in the 1940s and 50s. But if you could give a, this time, you're playing those first two measures. The fourth beat is A to D, then the B flat. Leave out the D this time. Just play the A as a quarter note. So you feel that sensation, the A to the B flat, and trying to match the sound and the color. All right. And you're also... You're coming in sharp and then dropping a bit. Mm, gotcha. Right on pitch. And one way, uh, this is not only, this is also supposed to be a guided practice as well. Um, just many, many times with a tuner in front of you, just. Um, of course, if I had a, pre I do have a preference. If you're going to come in either sharp or flat, I think it's better to come in a little bit sharp than to scoop up. Mm -hmm. But just do that a few times. Just play the F as if it's the entrance. It is the entrance, but without any other notes. Try it without your tongue, just with your embouchure set, and just start blowing air. And unmute yourself so we can hear. So that section, do something there. You will hear lots of recordings that slow it down. The, so do something. I have my preference, and, and also my preference can change from performance to performance. But it just sounds like you're kind of playing the notes without giving any sort of thought to it. Also, that G, the quarter note, let whatever you've done, let it hold on to its full value. Then that low B flat in the piano, the pianist might mm -hmm. take a little bit more time to go down that octave and give it a bit of rest there before you dotty and that pick up. So, and make sure that that low G feels like a pickup into that B. And so it is the half of the, it is a full eighth. And then make sure those triplets are even. Da, 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 With some direction to it. Can you start measure six? Sure. Good, very good. Again, with those triplets, make sure that they sound even. Mm. And also where you have um, 
in beat two and then again beat four, you have a larger interval, the G to the A, the D to the F sharp. Make sure that you're pushing the air through it so you don't have the Make sure the air is pushed through there. Um, can you start measure eight? That's da da da. And none of those notes should be accented. Good. Um, that fourth beat, you will hear it many, many different ways. Yeah. Um, some slow hold that D on it, some speed up the whole run. Uh, again, I don't really care too much as long as that fourth beat doesn't sound like a duple than a triplet, which you will hear, ba -da 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 -da, which you will hear a lot of. Um, my preference is that you start on that low note and you go right up. Um, I think it's too much to hold on to the B flat and the D or the D holding on until it lands on that C. I think it's giving away too much. It stops the flow. Um, one thing that I hear quite often and what you did on that low F, you stopped the sound mm. and then you started it up again. So you the... <laughs> So make sure you're pushing through um, and keeping the breath support, your embouchure port, and that beautiful, I mean, it's one of the best notes on the instrument. So really beautifully color it, but don't back away before you move to the E. Okay. Can you just start right there on the low F? Sure. And can you do it with, can you do it without accenting it? Yes. Good. Do it again, and then t this time keep going. And for those of you, um, part of the guided practice, um, you want to be consistent getting to that low E. So you can sit there and go. So you are subdividing it by playing the F as four sixteenths and then go on to that F E B G B flat C, still tonguing it. <laughs> then you can do it in your hair. <laughs> Another way to make sure you're coming off of it is tongue the second beat. <laughs> And play to the C. Make sure all of that is nice and even. So you don't, you're not having to think of two things at once. Um, so get the 16th notes, the quarter note even, and then start practicing, figuring out how you want to do beat four. Um, this, Matt, go ahead at beat, uh, measure 10 and go on. And Matthew again with the rhythm, it almost sounds like triplets. Mm. Ba da 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 da. Not, and I heard da 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 da. Mm. And of course, it probably will help when you're playing it with piano because if you look in the piano if she, he she has the eighth notes um but a pianist might follow you being very sensitive uh so really ba da 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 don't cheat in the length or the sound or the color those eighth notes that are leading to that downbeat can you start on measure 11 with the C. Gotcha. Good, good. And 
Keep going. Yes. Good. Stop there. Uh, this is a place, again, the rhythms between the duple and the triplets. Uh, and again, with making sure like that, ba, da, da, da. Uh, make sure that high C, that you're not accenting it. Uh, and again, the longer notes, don't back away on the air or the embouchure or the color. It's leading something because I'm hearing. That's an exaggeration, but. Direction, direction, direction. Uh, one practice thing for that C. Um, I myself, that's probably my second least favorite note to have to start on um, in a phrase, whether it's pianissimo or forte. The other one would be the D above it. Um, practice it, finger the C, but take off the register key so you're actually playing an F. Um, and then add the register. So you get this sensation of the air already being there. Don't tongue it in the practice. <laughs> then add the tongue. <laughs> and then the see. So do that a few times so people hear what I'm doing. So the F to the C not articulated twice. Yeah. And in rhythm, so you get this sensation that your air is already flowing with that. So one, two, three, four, one. Gotcha. Now lightly tongue the C. Still get the connection between the F and the C. Now start in right with the C. And try to have no accent and the pitch comes right in. Better, good. So those are things that you can practice over and over. Um, the you know, the rest of this long phrase can sound like whatever, but if you come in, you know, you know, then, you know, our ears are already contaminated with that and we're emotionally upset that you came in that way and they may not hear the rest of the phrase. <laughs> so really just over and over, um, practice that entrance. Um, a, and you will hear it um, in recordings. I put uh, at somewhere it will be in the chat links to different recordings. And some of the older recordings, they really emphasize the articulation that da 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 dee da da dee da 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 dee da da dee da 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 And you will hear, of course, it could be the recording technology from that time or that's just how they phrased it, um, that you really felt this ba da da dee da da dee, and then next da da as, as if they were reiterating it, but just with different notes. Um, could you play that 18 to 21? Mm -hmm. um, I want you this time, play it as smooth as possible. Articulate it where it says articulate, but as smooth as possible. Okay, um, just one thing, that C over the bar line, don't, don't 
you did something with your air emphasizing that you know, oh, yeah. I heard just uh, piano has a downbeat there just you just float over this time I want you to emphasize each of those little blocks uh, the phrasing or bowing marking uh, just to hear okay. the difference where you're almost separating each one so a little bit more weight on the beginning note of each under the phrase marking good and whether you're doing it that way or the more smooth way make sure measure 19 your beat two and your beat four that those 16th notes are even and not rushed because i'm here so and it, it is a tricky place to go especially the notes and your switching registers but really make sure that you've got triple and then the 16th notes could you start beat 20 and we will discuss going over that bar line between 21 and 22 mm -hmm. uh, again you can do it in many different ways you can keep that the feeling the pulse going or you could have that F sharp and the B flat and the piano be the end you take your time then sotto voce come back in but whatever you do make sure that you're doing it with some conviction in yourself or at least the listener has some conviction and i may disagree with what you do and the audience may um like reginald kell whose recording is linked um people pretty much either loved him or hated him <laughs> um but those that loved him you know it's because they believed that he believed what he was doing, even if I disagreed with what he was doing. Um, so that space there, there is a word in uh, Japanese traditional music and art called ma. And it is the, the absence, and that the absence, in this sense, the absence of sound, the absence of moving forward is as important to the sound that came before and the sound that came after. It doesn't mean putting a fermata over the eighth rest and waiting forever, but that sensation that that F sharp is there and it floats out, there's silence, and then you come back in with that beautiful low G. So start measure 20. Now that is the one place that if you can't make that big, big phrase in one breath, that place where you breathe, that could be the place where you can you okay. circular okay. breathe. Because I'd rather it, what I'd rather you do though, is practice your air, yeah. getting more in and down and out and have that cushion of air that will support the sound all the way through without a breath and without but if you have the choice and you have you can circular breathe so you have a choice to breathe do the phrase all in one or circular breathe at that point mm -hmm. so i would go with circular breathing so you don't have to decide because if you do have to breathe in that section um there's all sorts of different places um whatever place that makes sense to you and can be the most subtle um through this 
Um, your G at 22. Mm. Of course, this is on Zoom, and it's kind of hard to hear dynamic. It should be softer than the F sharp that you just played. Okay. I didn't mind that your F sharp um, was actually, you decrescendoed on the C, but then the F sharp was a little bit fuller. I didn't really mind that because it's such a beautiful sound, um, and you connected it well. Uh, but whatever you are on that F sharp, come in softer on the G. And then absolutely make sure that your duples are exact. And you can do the same thing that before, the... And so play through those rests. So you get that sound, your fingers and your air, get that absolutely correct. Then do it without the subdivision. Same thing later on the... And then the very important one there, at measure 20, 27, 28, 29, 29. That last E, don't cheat it. Mm. So it's a pickup to it. The pianist is not playing there. Then when you get in our guided practice section here to keep those triplets that they sound so it's a so it doesn't sound still be in duple. So you can do the so make sure that those triplets are very even and it, it is difficult but you definitely do not want it to sound like an eighth and two sixteenths gotcha. um could you just oh also one little thing Measure 25, 26. Don't breathe there. You Don't breathe. Stop. And then make that pianissimo incredibly soft. Uh, so it, it just floats out. It's an echo of that. So, but don't don't breathe because if you breathe, you've got one beat to set back up. Your embouchure might be too much. So you've got the... And if it is that soft, and I would not slow it down, it is all with the sound and the color, that eighth, that fourth beat, you can stretch that. You're not playing, but the piano can stretch that just a little bit. So that's almost silent. D, E flat, F is sort of hanging there. It also gives you time to take a bigger breath at 27. So you're not rushing over that bar line. The piano also has pianissimo. So, and then starting again, um, not slower. So coming right in with the nice pulse there. So could you, and then this is the same thing with the triplet, da, 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 measure 36. Da, 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 Could you play it that way from 36, please? At, uh, All articulated triplets. Yeah. And again, forget about the pickup E, just da, 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 da. Okay, now with the pickup E, and again, the same thing I said before, make sure that it feels like that pickup and it's not rushed over the bar line. And uh, play it as written now. Um, and no, no accent. 
on any, any of these notes coming up. Okay, make sure that those trip again are even because this time I heard ba da da dee da da ba da da dee da da and da 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 dee da 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 da. It's you were rushing or cello rondo. I don't know if you meant to, but you were doing it in two beats, two beats, two beats. If you want to do in a cello rondo or moving to that high D, then make it consistent all the way through those two bars. Now, da 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 um, I would prefer probably no a cello rondo. It's sort of built in. You've got the triplets and those beautiful notes in the 16th notes at measure 38. Um, could you start at 37 and keep going? And again, don't cheat that B. Okay. Da -da 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 because if you come off of it too soon, that poor pianist is doesn't you're not leading to the pianist down. -da -bum -ba -ba -bum. So that's one of the reasons I like watching the score. You really see it, but you should be able to hear it too. What's going on? Uh, yeah, you've got a slight decrescendo, but it is leading to that pianist chord there. Um, let's move on. Um, and again, with the practicing, what I had Matthew do with tonguing those triplets, then putting it together as written. So they're very, very equal, and you really hear the difference between triplet and duple. Can you start measure 40? Again, the same thing with the high C, just come in. Nice and supported, thick, beautiful sound. Don't back away from the C. It is leading to that B. Okay, I'll just stop you right there. Uh, measure 43, don't cheat the high C. Ah. Um, I mean, you have to listen to what's going on in the piano, um, but there shouldn't be a big gap between the C and the F sharp. You do need to articulate or place that F sharp. You don't necessarily have to breathe, um, but don't chop off the C. Um, it's a high note, and if you chop it off, our ears will make it sound even more chopped. Um, let me. Could you go to 48 now with these octaves? And I'll tell you the more weight on the bottom note, so we don't hear this accent. Mm. And because it's going up an octave, our ears will tend to hear the upper one as being louder, even if we are playing it. But just more. So, start there with the octaves. Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. And again, the same thing that happened before in 54. Make sure it's rhythmically very accurate. Now, if you are slowing it down or speeding it up, those are musical considerations, but make sure the relationship between the eighth note and the quarter note is correct. Um, now going on. Um, and I'll tell you, for practice purposes, 57 over the bar line of 58, do not breathe. Uh, you because you do all these things when you breathe and you have no time to reset for that high C. Good. 
bit going on. Sorry, page turn. Okay, good. Um, again, the, the thing with the triplets and the 16th note. Mm -hmm. um, 64, beat 3 and 4. If you want to push that down to the low E, uh, that's fine. But make sure that it there is the difference between the triplet and the 16th notes. Um, those low E's, yeah, it's not the best note on the clarinet. Um, but again, really be thinking of what's happening with the piano with uh, and as I'll say this and this has to do with the whole piece some to a lot of the interpretation that you will be doing will be determined by the pianist what they are doing um, you're in a conversation with the pianist back and forth um, if you've had a lot of rehearsal time you can work it out if you've had no rehearsal time at a concert in Tokyo a few years ago. Uh, the pianist was hired for this concert. I was hired for the concert. And because of traveling issues, we had no rehearsal. He had played the piece many times. And we're like, OK, you know, we're backstage pretty much laughing about it, because what can you do? And it was actually a very exciting performance, because I had to listen uh, I mean, I should all the time, but I had no idea what he would be doing. He didn't have any idea of what I was be doing. So all of that playing back and forth. Um, but that I would not decrescendo so much on those low E's. Just have very, very beautiful notes. Don't taper off so much and don't accent on them. Um, so very good. Uh, Measure 69. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop you here. This goes with the triplets here and elsewhere. Again, very even. Um, measure 80, 81. These are places you don't have a downbeat, which makes it hard. Um, make sure that that triplet, the last note, is not held longer than the others. Um, they do not have to be, again, it's a stylistic thing. They don't have to be so short. They do have to be even. Uh, one thing that I do to get this sensation, uh, you have it in measure 78. But you can do it later. So in practice, add a note. Mm. So you get this sensation of that last, and it's an E both of those times, of the length of that note, as if you were going on. So could you practice uh, 80 and 81, uh, and you can do the pickup into 80, mm -hmm. and play a note, and I don't care what note it is, um, on the beat four. So, and this, as you're doing it, think about how that third beat ends. Yeah, don't don't wait for the fourth beat though. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, good. Um I would not play them so short. Um yeah. Uh again, very lyrical. It it sounds out of character with what's going on. You can with the pianist, um, yeah, they have the slur, they have the dots. 
they are not going to be playing ba, 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 ba. Mm. match what the piano and whether you're playing it with an upright or a baby grand or a nine foot grand use your ear to match what they're doing but don't play them don't play them so short okay. can you start at measure 78 <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop here. Too short? Again, I feel they're too short. Okay. Less tongue, more air. Gotcha. Uh, almost no tongue. Okay. And again, Matthew, the the last of the triplet is way too long. You're too playing long. it into the next beat. Ba da da di da di da di da. The, imagine that you play it. But Feel don't. and hear that downbeat on beat four. Ya da 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 di da di da. Da 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 di da. Can you sing it for me? Da di da 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 di da. And that you're okay. So this I'm is a good down. point. Yeah. You sang it really short, so that sound ah. is in your ear. Ya da da di da di da di da da di da. Da di da 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 di da di da. Not da 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 da. Okay, again, sing it. Da di da 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 di da di da. Da di da di da di da di da. Good, much better. Um, start from there and moving on. And again, um, they're way too long. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, you're, you're, you're the jumping you're holding over to where the piano is you really have to have that silence on the downbeat for the piano and then the pianist moves on um go ahead and start measure 87 and this is a you're, there's a big big sound here with what the pianist is doing so really come in with a nice thick even though it can be a thin sounding note come in nice thick sound moving forward listening to the triplets in the piano good measure 89 to 92 make sure that those eighth notes are even mm. now you if you want to move it ahead or full, pull back on it um, you'll probably get some disagreement uh, with the pianist because of all the triplets are mm -hmm. going on unless except measure maybe measure 91 but da da di da 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 dum ba da da di da 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 dum can you start measure 89 playing all eighth notes. Good. Start at 89, playing what's written. Um, and again, at 92, you will hear different people do different things. Uh, some people over that bar line to 91 to 92, take a breath there. Um, so 92 is this big climax you and you arrive there by starting it. Some people don't take a breath and they just push that note into a ya da da di da di da di da 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 Try not to rush it too much in 92. Um, I prefer no slowing down of that leading into measure 93. There's a lot going on in the piano there. Uh, can you start again and keep moving on? And 
again, those no, not so short. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you. I often people see a dot, and somewhere in their brain, probably from when they were in sixth grade band, and the band director said that dot means staccato, which means play it as short as possible, because that's what you tell you might tell sixth graders. Um, lightly tongue them. Uh, and again, make it more lyrical and not like a big march. Can you start right at 92 and moving on? Sure. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, that's right there. Going on. Okay, I'll stop you there. And again, measure one, oh, one, two, one, oh, two over the bar line. To, Different people do different ways. Uh, for myself, it depends on the, that night, mm -hmm. whether I want to hold on to it. Do not breathe before that D to the F. Okay, which I did. Um, <laughs> if you have to, they're, they're really, um, for you, uh, and anyway, there really is no need to breathe in that phrase. If you do, pick a different place, but you should be able to, Because that's a beautiful, beautiful over the bar line that, and the piano is that beautiful chord right before the downbeat. And if you, so keep it that, but the, You should be able to do that in one breath. If not, pick a different place. You could. I took two breaths in there to show two of the possibilities. Make them very subtle, uh, but don't do it as a cheap breath. Um, if you're going to do it, do it with purpose. OK. okay. And uh, let's go 105. And again, the same thing that we actually, let's move on because we sort of went through this. Um, hold on. Yes. Could we go? Measure um, 149 on beat three. And again, thinking about keeping these eighth notes at their full value and then the difference between the triplet and duple. And just float up to that, just give a little bit more weight on the lower C, a little bit more upper lip. Um, so you don't suddenly go from holding almost all your fingers down to just your thumb. Um, if you don't have enough upper lip or embouchure going around, um, it can feel like it's falling out <laughs> and then it will be much thinner. Um, and actually, as you're pushing through that low C, you can push up a bit on your right hand thumb or the sensation that you're physically leaning into the C, which is the same as pushing up. It gives it gives the same effect of pushing up in your thumb or leaning in. So you're putting a little bit more mouthpiece in. Uh, so it supports that. Not biting, just literally more mouthpiece. So from the C to the C.
going on. Okay, cool. Okay, Sorry, same page, thing here. If you yeah, can, yeah. if you can do it in one breath. Yeah. Um, also, that molto dolce sempre um, over that bar line, uh, the pianist is pretty much going to determine the tempo. Uh, you don't want it too slow. Molto dolce sempre does not should not go into your brain as, oh, I'm slower here. Mm -hmm. That sh the word slower should not be part of what you're thinking there. It is an easing up. You're just sort of floating on those notes, and you have that beautiful duple chords in the piano, and you're ba 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 da da ba da da. And I would not retard all of that. Pick your tempo and keep it that way. Mm -hmm. And again, make sure. Um, as far as breathing, there are several places you could do. Um, one which I, because of what's happening in the piano, you sometimes will hear this breath. I don't like that. I think it's giving away what's happening beforehand. And that B flat to the B flat is so beautiful. If you take a breath there, that next B flat, you could be cheating it of the sound. I have heard it breathe at this next section where I'm going to play it. Um, and it can be quite effective if you really play it with the conviction. Um, <laughs> And then you get to float all the way. And especially from the middle of 157 to the end of that phrase, you really do not want to break that up anywhere with a breath. Um, so again, at that 157, if you can do it and make it sound good on the breath between the G flat and the F, um, and don't make the pianist wait for that breath, then I think that can be very effective. Um, by the way, your C to C octave was beautiful. Thank you. So, uh, now these, the tranquilo, um, very, very even. Not too sure. You've got the duple against the triple do. And again, the same thing with practicing that you don't come in late and that you don't hang on. So practice it this way. Uh -huh. So you feel that trip. Also in these triplets, and actually all of the triplets in this piece, I'm not thinking of the downbeat where it's because I don't want to beat out that second and fourth. I am thinking of the so and that can take some bit of a time to think of it um i'm not so sure that the audience hears a difference, but if you accent that beat two um, and then beat four, then you just got ba -ta -ta, ba -ta -ta, ta ta and it should be again more lyrical and just sort of floating over what's happened, that back and forth. Uh, can you start at the tranquilo, please? Sure. And again, no, 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 the, t get rid of those dots. Okay. All right. um, I see um, uh, another former student of Leon Rushinoff here. So I hope there's others. Um, 
Leon had me, he would hand me white out in pieces like this, um, particularly um, Shepherd on the Rock. And he would have me white out those little dots because that the tendency is that you're going to play them. Either we are too well trained or we're not trained enough, but it is not musical in any sense of the word to play those notes so short. Lightly, lightly tongue them. That's too short. And again, I'll just stop here. Uh, they're, they're too short, and the last one of each is way too long. Um, hopefully, you won't do that if you're playing with piano. But ba da di da da. And it leads to that silence. It doesn't go, the sound doesn't go into the silence after the triplet. And also 165, there, I mean, it's a stylistic choice. Um, I wouldn't make it, I would not slow that down. Um, I would le go right into 160. You've got the, do it with sound and color. If you, You're giving away, and if you have played that way throughout the whole piece, you have made people seasick, not you, just you <laughs> no, in general. Yeah. <laughs> you, by doing all of those, what we think are musical or romantic, you know, things to do with the clarinet, but go to that F, I mean, not to rush it, do it with color. And dynamic. Because the pianist joins you on beat four. And the pianist is not going to want to go ba da bum be da ba. So lead into that just very beautifully relaxed. You start 165. <laughs> Now those leadings, the more on the first one, and okay. don't slow it down over the bar line. But ba da di, ba da di, and again the way too short. Gotcha. I work on you, <laughs> if anyone listening or in the world is playing them short like that slur it, not for performance, but for learning it, and start feeling the connection without the tongue of those notes, then lightly put the tongue in. Because um, you've had these beautiful, beautiful, long, long melodies, and so lyrical, and then you want to... Uh, I don't think it's... I'm not sure, again, I was saying, if you can do something and convince people of it, I'm not sure a short note played there is going to be convincing. Gotcha. Um, and again, what people do on fourth beat of 169, min, people do it many different ways. Um, some hold it a little bit longer. The, so you've gone the... Or... Um, whatever you're going to do, make it work. I prefer it done with sound and color that you lean a little bit more on that A. It's a beautiful note. All of those notes, the A, G, F are beautiful. And that is a ritenuto un poco. 
So it's a, not so much. Um, and coming down. Um, again, there's many different ways. Do not make the notes short, but I like it. So practice those little sections mm. that make the little statement, then put them together. And I usually prefer not so much of a retard in that. The so playing each of the notes and practice those triplets, because um, the piano has the triplets before you, and so it gives you that sense of where it's going. Then you have that sound and then that silence, as important as the sound. But if it's too much, Now, there is nothing wrong. That's a particular taste, whatever you have. Um, great job. Thank you so much. Um, Jessica. Yes. Um, how much time do we have? Well, we're a bit over. Okay. Um, can I touch on just the very opening of the next movements? Uh, sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, Matthew, stay with us. Um, I didn't check the chat. Were there any questions? Don't see any as of now. Okay. Did anyone else want to play? Okay, so Matthew. <laughs> and again, I spent a lot of time on that first movement because if you lose them in the first movement with either... Bad technical, not talking about you, Matthew, but you, okay. plural. That's if okay. you lose the audience on bad technical stuff or bad musical stuff, actually in that first, you know, 40 bars, then you've pretty much lost them for the whole piece. Uh, so a lot, and so much of what I said in the first movement will translate to that. Um, the Allegro Appassionato. Uh, just do the opening. Um, up to measure eight and stop and then sure <laughs> sorry okay then we're back now again these longer notes that tendency <laughs> So push through the So push through those and where those phrasing or bowing marks are, actually make them different phrases. So you have short, short, and then much longer. And you can lift off without making it short that C and the E flat. And then you have the longer one. So from the beginning. And again, phrase that, just play that first phrase. Play the second phrase. Play the next. Okay, those first two were very beautiful. When you played it, the full thing, one, two, three, the fourth bar, that E flat was chopped off. The pianist is not, the pianist is not playing any moving part there. Not on beat two or beat three. So you can take time a little bit with shaping that. da be da 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 dee ba da be da 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 but and then you go. So can you do those three phrases and we'll yes. move on.
Good, much better. And again, this is something you can do when you're practicing when you have these phrases connected. Take them apart till they sound great. Then the next one, the and then work on trying to put them together and still making them sound great. Can we move to the next movement? And again, the end of this movement before, there's so many different ways of doing it. Mm. Uh, so you and the pianist can choose what to do. Um, and I really would, before we have to get out of here, recommend going to hear the particular uh, performers' recordings that I put in to hear those different. They're from different countries. They're from different eras. They're from different types of training and to hear how different they do it. But all of them, whether you agree with what they, all of them, except for one, and I won't name the one, um, all of them to me are absolutely convincing in what they did and how they performed it. And one particular, I like the fact that you could hear Harold Wright in two different ones, Gervais Depayer in two different ones. Um, very interesting is, um, Martin Frost, there is his studio recording, and then years later, a live recording with Yu Wang, um, and how incredibly different they are. It could be that it was live. It could be that it's Yu Wang playing, and she's doing what she wants to do. It could be that they both walked in off of a plane and hadn't seen each other before. Uh, but it is interesting to hear the different ones. Uh, could you start the Andante Kanmoto? And here, this is a place in practice, not that you were going to do it, but to get that dot so it doesn't sound like a triplet in this. And you will hear in these recordings how some people it is kind of marcato and others it's much more lyrical and some are absolutely playing it as if it's a triplet instead of the dotted. So could you just do the beginning up to uh, through measure four? And again, all through this piece, all through the whole um, piece and this movement, when you have these poco fortes and then a piano, it should be a huge, I mean, I am a nut about dynamics mm -hmm. and especially the extremes. And we play an instrument that is so incredibly well suited and easy to play super, anyone can play loud, but those super, super softs, and your audience and you should go, oh, when you, that loud. That the audience, oh, and you also do that, that feeling, mm -hmm. that intense feeling that you get from playing a subito piano or subito pianissimo. Um, getting an intense feeling from something super loud that is easy our instrument can do what for most people is very difficult let's skip to the very end and again all through the whole piece this very very sure with your rhythms that they're very solid the duple the triplet whether you're moving them forward or laying back on them but that you feel a sense of direction um, and not that, oh my God, you know, your fingers are not working or you're not <laughs> counting. Um, and again, one quick thing, and I won't have you do it, but measure 40, 44, 45, but da 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 and that chromatic. 
People do it all sorts of different ways. The So some will hold on to it, some will move it forward. Don't really care. Whatever is working uh, musically for you and you're convincing. Um, could we just, for fun, because we're almost there, <laughs> could we just go from 73? And again, this is where you really have to know what's coming with the piano. Um, to me, I always hear the ba da 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 It's like five triplets, and um, Depayer has marked in my score five, and it's like just hearing five triplets. Ba da ba da di ba da 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 ba ba di dum. And again, don't play those notes too short. The Fs, um, very full, very thick sound. Make sure the art. The intonation is very solid with those. So 73 to the end. Ah, I got it. And no, there's no need for an accent. Ba ba dum. It's ba da dee dum. Can you sing it for me? Ba 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 ba. Okay, that, that's terrible. There's there's no air through that. Ba da dee dum. Ba da dee dum. Ba da 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 dee da 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 dee dum. So air moving forward, not da 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 dum. It's not a march. It's not mar mar marcato. No no no. Sing it. I want to I want to know that it's in your head. Da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da. Okay, good. And really, don't. It's hard. I mean, of course, you're not going to be able to sing all those pitches in our voice. But that it is the matter of singing it, constantly singing. My lessons with Depire, we probably sang twenty five, thirty percent of the lesson. Um, to get that sensation of the air moving forward and hearing it mm -hmm. um, and without worrying about what these things are doing on the clarinet. So right there to the end. Don't worry about the slugs in the <laughs> nose, but that. <laughs> but no accents on them. <laughs> it's air moving forward, air, embouchure, pushing forward, not slapping with your tongue. Um, what you do at the end, again, um, you'll hear it so many different ways. I prefer not to have so much of a retard. That breath um, before the last two minutes. Or. I prefer a breath because it's that last little bit. But da 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 with the piano then. Bum, bum, bum. Um, so again, stylistically, there's many different ways to do it. Everyone give Matthew a big hand. Thank you so much. And um, for those who are entering the ICA competition, good luck. Uh, make sure you look good and you sound good. And I'm not giving you any instructions about the recording or whatever for that. You can go to the ICA website that has the specific instructions of what to record, how to record, and what they're asking for. But good luck to all of you doing that. And it was great to talk about uh, one of our best pieces and one of everybody's, one of music's great pieces. So thank you so much.